All right, what's going on, everybody? Sorry, I'm running late. It is 3.03 p.m. here in New Vienna, Iowa. Sorry about that. Normally, I like to get started at 3 right on the dot, but I was getting together the final images ready for today's Trivia Tuesday. Amazon is weird, part two. I don't think it's going to be as good as the first one because I just feel like that first one was ridiculously funny. Um, but I did find some interesting stuff on Amazon, stuff that uh, Amazon thinks that I want based on targeted Instagram ads. And we're going to see if this is stuff that you guys want too. So we'll go over it. Um, hopefully you guys are doing well here. Today is an just absolutely beautiful day. Uh, this morning was a little bit chilly, but I was able to run in like a singlet and it felt great out there. And then it was a little chilly this morning, but by lunchtime we were out in like shorts and t-shirts again and just enjoying sunshine. It's been a great day. I've got my big old glass of noon here and, um, Hopefully you guys are doing well uh, as well. Let's see, we got my mom in here, Matt Ponzer, Chris Yao, Jeff Elliott, Bert Legas, Sean Marshall, Martha's here as well. Hi everyone, Shannon's here. Awesome, she says on time and trivia. Awesome, good to see you. Uh, Emma Wilhelm said, pretty sure I had a dream about salt and vinegar chips after yesterday. Yeah, I I, I enjoyed eating the salt and vinegar chips yesterday in the mukbang i don't know if that makes it like the worst mukbang ever that i just like opened a bag of chips and ate them or if it's the most mukbangiest mukbang ever i could it could go either way uh simon ends is good evening from the uk awesome hey in the uk you guys are um is it just london that's having like re like re-restricting things going back to like groups of six or more or is that is that everywhere in england that's a uh either way it's an it's an unfortunate um thing Sorry to hear about that. Uh, Stevie76, breaking news here, saying Cardi B is single. Oh, interesting. I'm, you know, I I know one of Cardi B's songs, but I, if you showed me a whole bunch of, like, celebrity photos, I'm not sure I could pick her out. Um, all right. Let's see. KCA is here, ready for some trivia as well. Um, J. Mike Remy says, tuning in on the final stretch of an easy ride. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. All right, Bert Legas is here, and you guys are talking about glued implants. All right, that's cool. All right, um, people keep sending me like links for like glute activation, and it is helpful. It is helpful quite a bit, but I'm like getting a lot of them, so I've been doing so much reading about glutes. Um, I never thought I would read this much about glutes, but I feel like everything. Uh, I feel like I'm in. Uh, I'm stabilizing and strengthening a lot of things, you know, kind of like uh, doing a lot of maintenance, like finally getting to a lot of the maintenance that I should have been doing for years. And it feels good, you know. Um, Trent Wicker says, you should ask an Amazon picker slash packer what they have to pack. Now, those are good stories. Yeah, I'm sure. It's got to be pretty interesting. Uh, Chris Ben Greco, you are in the correct live stream today. Glad to have you here. Uh, Sean Marshall said, I got some peanut butter toast with everything bagel seasoning. That sounds weird, but savory and delicious too. CJ Cruz says, listen to the podcast while running. And just so you know, you were chewing chips at about 87 steps per minute yesterday. <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. I, I'm going to have to think about that. Like uh, next time I'm trying to hit like, uh, uh, you know, like a 190 pace. Or a 180 pace. Just think about like uh, it's about chip eating speed. Awesome. Um, Mark Weston says, unfortunately, the rule of six is UK wide. Ooh, that's uh, that's crazy. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's get to um, the first. Uh, let's just jump into it today in terms of the Amazon trivia. Heads up though, I only have five. I can only find five because I don't know if it was um, like something that they were eventually planning on doing. I don't think that this live stream is getting quite enough like watch time that like Amazon took notice and were like, oh, we should probably start putting labels or captions on our products. But they started putting captions on the products. So that made this game like a little bit harder because like the first time they did it, it was just like discover products and more at Amazon and there would just be no caption with the images and it made it really hard to figure out like what was going on. Um, 
But I tried to find some other stuff. And all right, I'm gonna switch over to like my browser view where you could see my browser and you could see like different photos that I'm messing with. Um, usually it makes things freeze up. So I'm gonna let it like come up. So there you go. We've got a screenshot here. And see, here's what I'm saying. Like it's an Amazon home and it tells you it's a Herman Miller Mira two chair, one size fog with studio on a white frame. Um, but the way that I'm gonna switch this one around, this uh, one wrinkle here, is that I'm gonna make it, let's move this over a little bit. And uh, move me over there. I think that fits better. Um, hopefully uh, I'm back. So uh, what I'm gonna do here to make it different is for this one on Amazon, guess the price. So it's like definitely straight up price is right. What do you think the price is for this Herman Miller mirror two chair one size fog with studio white frame. I figured this would be kind of an interesting thing to do because I don't think people realize how much these chairs cost. And I think it is also interesting because I, you know, I hear about a lot of places where um, they are uh, thinking about like not bringing people back even like once there's a vaccine and coronavirus kind of like, you know, ends however it's going to end. Um, and uh, you know, the cost of office space is really insane. So we've got some prices over here. We've got Larry Lawrence came in first with ten fifty, like one thousand and fifty dollars for this office chair. Drew Homa says Herman Miller is expensive. It is expensive, and I'll tell you, I've sat in Herman Miller chairs before. They're very nice, but they are very expensive. Trent Wicker says two thousand. JC coming in with one dollar. Sean Marshall says fifty nine ninety nine. If only. Uh, Brett Reed says four ninety nine. I feel like that would be like a good price for like a solid office chair. Uh, KCA says 200. Leona Wall coming with 2,000. Uh, we got everything all over the place. Ozenfone Backstro says 2,000 pounds. Uh, Sean Marsh says, well, these are high guesses. They are high guesses. And I, I did say like that they're really expensive. And so that could be like affecting people's guesses here. Um, but CV76 says, uh, it is a chair for the glutes. So, I mean, I think that, you know, what comes with it, there's usually on the bottom of a Herman Miller chair, there's like four or five different like levers that you can pull to like infinitely adjust it. I think one is glute activation, like that knob there, it just keeps them activated all the time. So it's, <laughs> uh, so that's, that's what makes it uh, so expensive. So let's get to the price here. And the price is, oh, uh, there we go. Herman Miller from the Herman Miller store, $935 for this chair. So for those of you who thought it was more than a thousand bucks, you know, it's basically a bargain, but like a thousand, like $935 for your office chair. I mean, if you have a handful of people at your office, that's a, 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 a real expensive for, for office seating. Uh, uh, Adam Steve says, my girlfriend ordered one of those for her work from home setup. and I almost died carrying it up to our fourth floor apartment. <laughs> I guess it's not like uh, it's not like aircraft aluminum or anything like that. It looks it's pretty. They are pretty heavy chairs. And Jeff Elliott says there is a huge difference in a sixty dollar IKEA chair and a five hundred dollar office chair, especially when you sit in it for eight hours a day. Oh, for sure, for sure. I would I will definitely agree with that. I got rid of my office chair a while ago and I sit on like um, a stool, not like a bar stool, but it's like kind of like a bar stool, but the height is adjustable and it sits at my like desk height. And so I would just sit at that. So that way it would kind of, I would either end up slouching miserably and that would get really painful really fast or I'd end up like making myself sit up. So I would do that. Um, so that's what I had at my office. I think that was like a hundred bucks. Um, and the other thing was for me, like the nature of my work, it was like, if I'm spending a lot of time sitting at my desk, I'm not doing the right thing. I need to be getting up. I need to be going to talk to somebody or doing something. So it was kind of like an intentional way of, you know, keeping myself moving kind of like how I intentionally would try to schedule meetings like the middle afternoon when I'm generally not that, uh, motivated. That's some, something else I would do. Um, Sean Miles wants to know about nylon plates. I don't know if there's any carbon in this or nylon at all. Um, but the mesh that's on the bottom of these Herman Miller chairs, very comfy. And then the backs are very well ventilated. So like, if, you know, if you're leaning against it, uh, you're not going to get warm from it. So yeah. So it's, I mean, I, I would say that I understand where the price comes from. I'm not gonna say it's worth it, but I understand where the price comes from. And I guess like, how, I mean, how long, how long do you think these last? I don't know, I'm not sure. And Stephen Gerzer said, the reason our glutes are not acting properly is that we sit too much. Yeah, 
I, I mean, I, I used to have like a standing desk at work and then I just realized like, I'm just too tired. Like I would hurry up and get tasks like done or like, just like kind of like throw them off my desk, um, figuratively just so that I could like go do something else and sit down for a second. So like, I, I mean, maybe I'm, that's exactly why I need a, a standing desk, but I was just always like, ah, oh, this standing, I don't like it. So, yeah. Gavin Brady says, you must have energy rods for that kind of money. Yeah. All right. Let's get to the next one. Why does that keep coming up? All right. Next one. Um, this is another one. It falls in the category. I mean, clearly you could see what it is. And for those of you listening along, it uh, looks like a tower of cats. It's a cat tower. But it's made out of like, like what looks like some sort of metal rods and like fabric and stuff. So it's not like the kinds that are like made out of wood with like carpet on it. It's a little bit more modern of a take on it, I think. There's lots of little nooks and crannies for the cats to hide inside. How much do you think this is? I've, I've never purchased anything like this before. I don't have, I haven't had a cat since like 1998. So I don't, I don't know. But yeah, Casey calls it a kitty city. A kitty city, yeah. Um, let's see. I don't think there's any carbon fiber in this. Although those rods, you know, maybe... Maybe there is some sort of reinforced nylon in the plastic. Um, Brett Legas call, calling it a shoe rack. Let's see. Uh, Daniel M said it's a cat labyrinth. Yeah, for sure. We got we got some guesses in here from Chris Yeah with 400. Brett Reed says 250. David Sachs says 150. Jeff Elliott 199. Uh, Larry Lawrence 477.34. Very specific number. <laughs> Ride Venture calls this the cat amount. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Uh, Chris Yao says, that's at New York City Studio. It's about 3500 per month. I don't know. I don't know what the square footage is on this thing. All right. Is it a Piba base? Brett Reed asks. No, I think that's just ripstop nylon. If, if ripstop. But it's uh, some sort of nylon. Um, Chris Dyke says, the cat owners will say it's worth 500 The dog owners will say 20 <laughs> That's funny. All right. Let's see. The price for this is, I think because I opened them in google tabs that's why it's something like that 147.99 so like i don't know that's a lot of stuff for your cats um and it's only 140 i was expecting something more than that so like 147 dollars but i just feel like you know that's 147 dollars of cat tower but you're you're giving up like 10 percent of your house to that like that's just that looks giant um it look it's three stories tall it's like a pyramid that fits in the corner of your house. I just feel like, yeah, yeah. Martha said it's seven eighths of a Hyperion tempo. Some of you guys are uh, putting your bids in at um, numbers of S SL twenties. So we got some word of the day action going on with that as well. <laughs> yeah, Chris McLean says at one forty seven, it's a bargain. That's how some people would probably look at it. I'm not sure it's a bargain bargain, but it's definitely an interesting price. It's less than I, th I was thinking. All right, let's get to the next one. Third one. Here's where things get really start to get a little bit weird for you guys. Oh, Chris Yass says it's currently marked down at one thirty nine ninety nine. I do love enjoy the fact that Amazon has like basically dynamic, like like instantly dynamic pricing. Jay Z says, "For one hundred and fifty dollars, you can give your cat more places to ignore you." <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's so funny. Um, or cycle on Wednesday said, "That's basically nothing for a cat tower." Yeah, I I just thought it would be more expensive than that. All right, all right. So, what is this next thing? This next thing, it looks like a tube that has uh, what is it called? Like Brillo with steel wool, a piece of steel wool inside next to a, a stone stick of some sort. It says Norbide Stick, S-T-I-K, I think that's what it says. Boston. So it's a Boston. Is that what it says on there? Or Norton? I don't know. I can't really see what it says on there. Um, and this is in the Amazon section where they just don't care what the caption is. It just says discover products and home improvement and more. So it's not how much is it. Really, you could guess how much it is too. You'll never guess how much it is. But what is this thing? So, uh, Ilya Kim says, hey, people. K. Smithley says, what is it? CV76 says, no comment. Chris Yao thinks it's a fire starter. I think that's kind of close. I'm, I'm, you know, I know the answer. I've looked at this product. I'm still not really sure. Uh, Jeff Elliott says, it looks like a whetstone. K. Smithley says, I'm saying 65 bucks. Ride Venture says, a piece of art. 
Sean Marshall says twenty nine ninety nine. Chris X says if if it's a Boston, Martha should get this. <laughs> That's funny. Laney A says a knife sharpener. Um, Sean Marshall says SJD special edition foam roller. Yeah, I, I feel like if he had this and it were a foam roller, given that it's like a rectangle, he'd be like, you know, it's not for everyone, but I've been foam rolling my entire life, so that's why I can use this. I feel like that's what he would, <laughs> what he would say about it. Uh, all right, so let's get to what it is. It is, uh, it's Norton, so I think it says Norton, not Boston. Norton Abrasives St. Gobain dressing stick. That's That's what the product description is. BN. Three by one and a half times three sixteenths of an inch, and it's eighty dollars, right? So I was like, I, "There's no picture other than the one picture that we saw already on Amazon." So Juan Ramos says whetstone. People say whetstone or like knife sharpener. I think that's what it is. I scrolled down a little bit further, and the first customer question is, "What is this thing?" <laughs> Uh, and the answer is boron nitride is a very hard material, harder than most natural and man-made grinding I think, materials. It goes on. So then I, I looked further to see what it is. Um, so you stick this stick to contour the edge of your grinding wheel. It's usually done to a wheel mounted on something, something. I didn't get to it. Um, so the other answer is it's a boron dressing stri- stick to dress forms on grinding wheels. I understand each of those words individually, but I don't know what that means. Dress forms on grinding wheels. It's very hard and brittle. I use it to put a radius on the tip or corner of a wheel. How do you put a radius or a tip on a wheel? I'm, I'm, I'm missing something here. But, yeah. So, maybe some of you got... Yeah, Mark Chan Coco. I still don't get what it is. I don't know. I don't know what it is either. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Elliott says it's basically a whetstone, but for grinding wheel. So it sharpens or it makes more abrasive or grindy a grinding wheel, right? Is that right it is? I think that's what it is. Um, yeah, <laughs> the, the answer below by Fresh Tea. Um, you put this on your Thanksgiving dinner instead of gravy, it's less messy. I don't I don't even understand the answer, but it, I like the attempt. I like the attempt to try and figure out what this thing is. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm I'm not sure. Martha says dressing must be a UK usage, like the way we say pants and they say trousers. I I'm I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, Gavin Brain says, and dang, I just got rid of his. He just got rid of his grinding wheel. I know you could have like fixed it, I guess, with this eighty dollar boron nitride stick. So we'll see. What I don't understand is, does the stick go inside the tube? Is that what it's, what's, what's going on? Remember? Because it came in like a tube. Then what was the thing inside the tube? I don't, there's so many things that are left unexplained. Because if there's a tube, a stick, and a something in the tube, don't you think in the product description it should, uh, like, kind of like accessories included? Watch. UB, USB, like, charging cable. Instruction manual. Like, those are the things that you would, you would, it would see that listed out. Where are, like, the list of items that come in the package? I, I just don't know. I don't know. So, Ride Venture says it's weird. Move on. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> Martha says, "Did you ever look up the fake golf clubs for guys to pee on the course?" No, I didn't. I did. <laughs> I forgot to look that up. Uh, yeah. All right. Let, let's get to uh, let's get to the next one. I think we're on number four out of the five that I have. So, like this, the description for this is um, discover products and office supplies and more. So what it looks like to me, I'm trying to explain, like describe it to people listening. It looks like like a long stick, almost like kind of like, uh, like something that you would use to roast marshmallows over a campfire. But it's got like a little bit of a hooky part at the end. So... Chris Yow thinks it's cannabis transport tube and stick to beat off moochers. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, Ride Venture says it's a COVID test. Yeah, no, it's not. Uh, Recycle on Wednesday says, is it for blinds? I could see that because it's got a little hook like for the blinds that are up the top. And you got to reach real high and then you twist it so that way you can open and shut the blinds. Uh, Martha says, are all these in the home improvement department? No, not all of them are. So like this one comes from just Amazon and the caption says discover products in office supplies and more 
Although I'll give you guys a hint. I don't consider this an office supply. It counts more as and more. So, um, how long are they? It, uh, I don't remember. Uh, I'll, I mean, I, it doesn't give it away, but I think they were like 30 inches or so. So they're, they're long. Um, <laughs> Chris Dykes says it's an empl employee disciplinary device. Uh, Bert Leguess says it's a straightening hook. I, I don't understand what that means, Bert. A straightening hook? Uh, Trent Wicker says a dipstick for your printer. Yeah, it's like, does it have enough toner? And you put like, put the dipstick in there and pull it out. Oh yeah, we're good. We got about, we're about, well, but we're about a quart low. Maybe we can use more. Um, yeah, a discreet nose picker for 30 inches. That, that'd be something. All right, here we go. Here's what it is. It is, uh, an arm control rod, a sex accessory for large puppets, two pack. It's $17. So... Yeah, for large puppets. Indeed, that's exactly why is there so much? That's exactly what this is. So the brand is by Silly Puppets, arm control rod accessory for large puppets, two packs. And there's even like a video of it, but I, you guys can go and I guess look for the video if you want. It's not that funny, but um, but yeah. So like when there's puppets for like the arms, you know they have the sticks that control the arms. That's what it is. And Jung Hong says, how is that office supply? I don't know, but that's the way that, uh, oh, I clicked off that image already, but that's the way that Amazon and Instagram are marketing it to me. So I'm not sure how that, how that fits in at all, but that's what it gave me. Stevie 76 says, some people are into puppets. <laughs> Matt Ponder says, it sounds like a deal. I don't know if it is or isn't. It could be. I don't know. Sean Marshall says the price is the most surprising part. Sean, did you think it was going to be more like? The, did you think that the arm parts for a puppet cost more than sixteen ninety five a pair? Sean Marshall says so on the scale of uselessness, this gets a ten out of ten. <laughs> Stevie seventy six is a tax deductible office supply, P perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> oh, and Jeff Elliott says it's an office supply because they use it to control the puppets in sexual harassment training. I I I can kind of see that that's that's like sadly funny um yeah martha says go oh, i don't get these tempting ads what are you buying on amazon i i don't know but i think because i'm actually looking at all of them and and touching them all i think that that data gets sent back that like this guy looked at this instagram ad and clicked on it and so like some of the things like the reason why this has been getting harder is not because amazon doesn't have weird obscure stuff but some of this stuff is like so obscure that it's not even like fun because it'll be like, what the heck is that? It'll be like a screw to the part of like a lawnmower, a very specific kind of screw. I'm like, that's really not that interesting. But Amazon thinks that at least when I'm on Instagram, I'm interested in learning more about like very specific product specific screws or like replacement parts. So I don't know. I just think that like Amazon, I don't know what Amazon thinks. Like, you know, it'd be great if uh like if amazon like took all its data that it that it aggregates from wherever it aggregates it from like you know eavesdropping on your amazon uh, conversations through amazon echo or your google searches or cookies or however amazon's feeding itself all this data i wish that like you know it'd be great as long as they're doing all this like i wish there were a button i can uh click in my like in the upper right hand corner uh like where my settings are where my profile is and it's like orders your lists you know like payment history and then it could be like who we think you are like like amazon's uh impression and it'd be like michael co is a guy who loves puppets lawn mowing and cats and i wish i would have like a real long narrative of like who i who who it thinks i am you know because that that'd be really funny that would be amazing and then it would give me insight into like, oh, that's why it's giving me these other things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bert Legas says, after this trivia, Kofuzi is going to send in a support ticket to Amazon. Please reset my history. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, Sean Marsh says, so what you're saying is we need to make a burner Amazon account to guarantee even better trivia Tuesdays? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> um Bert, Brett Reed says, this quote, this guy loves random crap. Let's bombard him, quote, by Jeff Bezos. That Yeah, that's pretty funny. 
Yeah, Sean Marshall says, so by indulging in the search, we are manipulating the algorithm. I think so. I think so. Um, and CV76 says, one day delivery to Iowa? No, no. So if you look at it, the one day delivery, it shows deliver to Michael in Chicago. So like my default like email, like uh, mailing address is still my Chicago address. And then when I switch it to like the Iowa address, everything changes to one week. So it's kind of sad. That makes me very sad. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, Kevin Brady says, at least it comes with free returns if your puppet arms are completely uncontrollable. <laughs> uh, and it got great reviews, JC says. Good to know it gets great reviews. I'm tempted. And the thing is, look, I, I mean, I don't have the, like, the listing here. I just have the screenshot of it. It uh, says it's got four and a half stars with 389 reviews. 300. I mean, either... I have severely underestimated the potential market size of people making puppets at home. Or the brand Silly Puppets has cornered the market on puppet arm sticks or arm control rod accessories. One of the two. But like, how does it get 389 reviews? That's crazy. I think that's amazing. All right, let's get to the last one. What's this? This is from Amazon, an ad that I got on Instagram. It says, discover products in office supplies and more. When I first saw this, I thought that this was like, oh, these are breast implants. Why are they selling a four pack of breast implants? Because they're showing four in the, on the product image. And then inset in the picture, for those listening, there's a picture of a hand holding it. Uh, I think in order to show the sense of scale. So it's probably about the size of like uh, a race medal to put it in running terms and then uh but it's like uh kind of like a almost like a half circle and um clear so what is it jeff Lee thinks they're wrist rests. i think that's a pretty good pretty good guess uh sean marshall says break fake bra inserts i thought so too but then there's a there's four of them and that's what i don't understand why there's four a lot of breast implant guesses. I think that's a really good guess. <laughs> CV76 says glute implants. That would be great if, like, that's what it thought I really wanted from all of, like, I don't know if I'm, like, I'm pretty sure Amazon knows that we've been talking a lot about butts. But, uh, again, why are there four, right? So, Jung Hong says, BOGO, buy one, get one. So, you get one for you, and then you get one, give one away to your friends. Uh, Nutrition Nerd says, door stopper. Juco82 says, paperweight. Um... Yeah, Life Love says fake butt. Steve, David Sachs is magnifying glass. I would I would think that that might be right, except for there's uh, something like embossed in this material on the top um, that makes it, that would obscure whatever you're trying to look at. You know, um, Chris Yao says one of my firm's clients is a husband wife team who makes lifelike baby dolls and the weirdest scariest stuff ever. <laughs> um, the uh, the baby here has found. Uh, my uh, mother-in-law's stash of old dolls and uh, so she's kept like not all of them but a handful of the more cherished dolls that like my wife and her sisters had and then even some that she had from like growing up I don't know how like so they must be I mean they must be really old decades old and the one that my daughter likes the most is the one that has like the eyes that they open when you lift the baby up and then they close when you lay it down and it like has lost all its hair and it's uh, like just unusually tall. I need some like arm control rods for it. It's so big and uh, it's so creepy. And the baby's just like, Daddy, don't you love this doll? And I'm like, mm, Yes, no, I don't. But all right, let's see. Um, you need four because two is not enough. Yep. Uh, Ryan Pye says computerizer. I mean, it'd be a big computerizer, but I think you could do it. Um, yeah, Matt 852, it's gel to put on your on running cushioning nubs, maybe. Trent Worker thinks you move your furniture with them. Mm. Ryan Polly says something to stabilize something that vibrates. Greg Gitahara says giant nipple savers for runners. <laughs> oh man. And again, uh, JC again looking at the reviews. It's got th four and a half stars. Let's see what it is so we could talk about how well it does it's got 2235 reviews four and a half stars it's from the ducky store doorstopper wall protector four pack 
quiet shock absorbent gel, adhesive reusable bumper protector, wall shield, and silencer for door handles. It's more discreet than a doorknob safety cover, and it's clear. So it prevents your door, like if you open the door real wide, you know, sometimes they have the little, like, things that you, like, will screw into, like, the door trim, the thing that goes, right? That thing, the, the, so the door can hit again, so that way the doorknob doesn't, like, punch through the um, drywall. It's one of those things. So that's what it is. Nutrition nerd says, bingo. Uh, someone said, like, a door stopper. So, yeah, I think you could use it as a door stopper. I think you would put it in front of the door to keep it from closing. And then um, the other thing, I think mainly what it's for is you put it on the wall. So that way, like when the doorknob hits it, the doorknob hits that and not breaking or scratching the drywall. So, yeah, and it is <laughs> discreet. Yes, it is discreet. Stevie76 says it's discreet with wiki face emoji. Yeah, I don't know why you need it to be so discreet, but there it is. And so here's, here's more of the dimensions. It's washable and reusable. Um, and it's 0.6 inches, uh, deep and two inches tall, the, uh, a transparent gel material. So you can, I guess like, it's, uh, like one of those things where like you get it wet and then you can put it on something and then you take it off and then, uh, it's reusable. I'm not sure. Um, Greg Tahara says, I'm buying those for my neck longer to save my nipples from chafing. I'll say there goes to Fuzzy certified. Uh, I mean, they're reusable and they are discreet. So maybe, maybe. <laughs> all right, that's it. That's all for the trivia for today, though, everybody. I wish I was looking for a sixth one, but um, I don't know. But we'll see uh, what Amazon gives me next week or in the next, like, weeks or so because who, who knows what's going to happen now since I've been looking at all this stuff. One that I thought like was super weird looking, I was like, what is that? No one's ever going to guess what that is. But it fell in, fell in like this. This is a super just obscure part that they sell. It was like the paper feeder for like a Fujitsu scan snap paper scanner. And I was like, no one's going to get that. Uh, Ride Venture says, you bought all these for the next giveaway? Can you imagine if I bought that? I mean, people would like that because someone would get away go away with like a Herman Miller chair. And that'd be pretty nice. Right now, I'm sitting on a, a loop, like a, a metal fold-up chair. See it? This is just a fold-up chair from the basement. I could go for a Herman Miller chair. Maybe that's why my glutes aren't activated. I've been sitting on this metal chair for like since July. So for like August, no, two months. Not too bad. Hmm. Um, Sky Bell says, please do more GoPro vlogging videos. You have the best and most in-depth on YouTube, but it seems you have just one. If you have more, please create a playlist. All right. I mean, someone asked me to do one for the Insta360, like some of the things that I like to do. I just didn't think there'd be a big audience for that one, so I wasn't sure if I would do it, but uh, maybe I'll do that. And I mean, I can do more like GoPro vlogging videos, but um, I don't know. I just, I don't think that there's a lot to it for me. I like set the camera and forget it. And then I just kind of, I shoot a lot. So I don't know. I'll, I'll have to think a little bit more about it because I think there's more to it than kind of what I'm intimating, but I have to figure out a way to, exp to explain that. But I, thank you. Thank you for the compliment. Um, all right. Uh, CV76, am I going to review the new Apple Watch or Apple Fit? Um, I may. I may. I mean, my Apple Watch is Apple Watch 4, so I guess if there's a new one coming out, it's a couple generations old now. So, but I mean, mine still works great. And that's the only. That's like the biggest problem with the Apple Watch is that it, like, there isn't a real. Com I mean, I haven't seen if there's like. I'm, is there? Has the new one been announced yet? There's something tomorrow, right? From Apple. Anyway, or was it today? That was today. It was today. So I haven't seen it yet, um, but you know we'll see. We'll see. It might be time, but um, I don't know. I don't know about another Apple Watch. Uh, Andor Kish, good to see you again. Says for someone who hated the Pegasus 37, would I hate the Ride 13? No, probably not. If you hated the Pegasus 37, it's probably because you thought it was a little bit too firm, maybe a little bit too tight in the forefoot. Um, the Ride 13 is the opposite of those two things. Uh, JC says, I have a Herman Melville chair. One leg is missing. Oh, yeah. I see what you did there. 
Awesome. Um, Chris Dyke said, I really liked your vid the other day touring us through your, ta- through your run. Yeah, I like that one too. They don't, those don't, those definitely don't get a lot of views and they're shorter than all my other videos. So every time I log into YouTube, like on the YouTube studio is like the other app that I use to look at like comments and like metrics and all that stuff. And that's where I like upload things and all that stuff. Every time I upload a video like that, I enjoy making those a lot. I have more fun doing that than like a lot of the product videos that I do, but like the number of views are down and the average watch duration is down. So YouTube always says like, this video is not performing as well as your other videos. Think about what you did wrong. It doesn't say that, but that's kind of like the, that's kind of the, the, the message that they're trying to send. But I like them. I'm glad you guys like them too. Um, Chris Yao says, poop, Amazon trivia equals sure. Video content creation, <laughs> is there an audience? <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> uh, that's really funny. Uh, that's, that's a very fair, that's a very fair critique. <laughs> uh, Life Love says, how's your knee? Uh, thank you for asking. It's doing better. I'm feeling very optimistic about it today. I still had like, uh, I ended up running about seven miles today, eight miles today. Um, I ran like a, a mile and a half out and then I realized I forgot the SD card for my GoPro. So I turned around and came home. While I was here, I did go to the bathroom and poop. But, uh, and then I ran my normal loop again, uh, the five mile loop. So it was like about seven or eight miles today. By the end, like the last mile and a half, two miles, my knee was like hurting, My, but it also was felt a little different. It felt like it was a little bit in my shin. So I felt like, okay, that feels more like a shin splint and not like the knee thing that's been bothering me. So that's a plus. Um, but I also just felt like it's a different kind of thing that's been going on lately. So, and I feel like it's not as bad, much more manageable. I'm not as many warning signals are getting sent to my head about it. So I'm feeling very optimistic about it. So I'm hoping that, you know, having taken a day off running on Sunday, I'll take another Sunday off this week, you know, by the end of like next Sunday, I'm hoping to feel really good. So thanks. That's where I'm going. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, Andrew Kish's, yeah, the peg 37 was too firm for him. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mark Chancoco says there's a new Garmin 745 and Venue SQ coming out. SQ will have a square face. I'm not a big fan of the square, square, square faces. That's a big reason I don't like Apple Watch. If Apple Watch made a round face watch and gave it a big battery, so I only have to charge it like every three days, um, that's the watch that I would get. I would still kind of miss though not being in the Polar Flow ecosystem, but like, you know, and I would hope. I would want it to have an altimeter too. I kind of like having the altimeter, but I don't know. So like, but that would be much more like the design of the square faced Apple watch. I just don't like it. Uh, I have a very visceral reaction to it for no logical reason, but I just do. Uh, Sky Bell says, I'm about to get my first GoPro. I'm buying, oh, where'd it go? Um, buying the Hero 8. Even the slightest tutorial on what frame rates to shoot to get different types of shot will be greatly appreciated. Okay, I think I can maybe do something like that. Give some examples. All right, all right. But if you're going to buy the GoPro Hero 8, I think tomorrow is the product announcement for the GoPro Hero 9, just so you know. Um, I have no idea what's coming. I mean, I have some idea based on, like, some of the leaked images and stuff. But um, uh, I'm not saying, like, you should definitely wait and get the Hero 9 but I would wait until the Hero 9 comes out because then the Hero 8 might be like just that much cheaper. Ride Venture says, I would like a new Garmin 245 Music Decent. I think it is. I think a lot of people like that one. The 245 Music, I believe that one does have stride integration. So if you want a foot pod, you can use your foot pod with that one. Um, I don't think it has an altimeter. So I think some of those other functions, I, does it have a compass? I think it still does. I think all the Garmins do. Many, many of the, it might not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what are the features you're losing from the 245 versus like the 645. It's interesting, Mark said that the 745 is coming out. Um, I was looking at a 645 music to test one of those. Cause I was like, oh, I've been on Polar for a while. I'm looking at a Coros watch now. Next I want to do a Garmin. So I was thinking either maybe an older, like a Garmin Phoenix 5. Because the price point on that is very interesting, or like the 645 music, I think are the kind of watches that I want. But if a 745 is coming, 
maybe that's the one I need. I don't not not that I need any of them, but that's well, maybe that's the one I'll look at. So, um, all right. Uh, Sean Marshall says, so far, this live stream has manipulated Amazon metrics and endangered cornfields. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. Um, Frank LaHulier says, is there a running application for blood oxygen measurements? Um, I would say only if you're trying to prove to people. Well, I mean, I don't know. I have not thought that it'd be that useful. But, I mean, until I knew that there was a such thing called running power, I would not have thought that running power was a data field that I would want. But I will say that, like, I mean, my wife and I have got those finger uh, pulse oximeter things. Um, my, wi my wife bought two of them. Um, but uh, I think that one of the things that you could do is while you're running, show people, like, hey, I'm running with a mask on and I'm not suffocating. That's one of the things that you could do with it. Yeah. Mm. Shannon says, you did a run poop on an actual toilet. I did. I did. I came back and my father-in-law was like, what happened? I was like, I forgot something. And I was like, I and, but then I went right into the bathroom. So I'm like, he's probably like, sure, forgot something. Okay. Um, but I was like, I forgot something. And as I was going to the bathroom, he goes, yeah, I thought you were gone kind of, I thought you came back kind of fast. That was a little quick. I was like, yeah, I had to turn around. So, but then I did from the bathroom, then go upstairs up here to, to get the, the, the memory card. And then I went, so. Uh, yeah, Mark Chancoco. Jung Hong first says, wow, pooping while running is a lot more common than I would have ever thought. It is. Uh, and Mark Chancoco says, it brings everyone together. <laughs> it does. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. I'm going to leave it there for today, guys. Thanks, everyone, for humoring me and uh, playing along with Amazon is Weird Part 2. I'm going to keep – I'm going to keep – pressing on all the links that Amazon or all the ads that Amazon gives me just to see how weird Amazon can get. And uh, we'll see where it takes us. Uh, so I don't know, again, if we'll do another Amazon is weird next Tuesday, but we'll have another trivia Tuesday because I like doing it. So uh, that's all I have for today. Tomorrow's video is going to be about battery life. So super compelling. Maybe it should be about GoPro or 360 camera shooting techniques. I'm not sure. But so far, I have slated for it is uh, battery life, things that annoy me about it. And then we'll do another live stream. It won't have a subject or a theme, but just a live stream where we can all hang out. In the meantime, hopefully you guys are staying safe out there, especially those of you affected by fires and also now hurricanes. So be safe out there, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.